Hello everyone, today we are breaking down the new House of the Dragon trailer for the rest of the season. We get some new footage that is very interesting, but before that, remember to like the video. It helps out the channel a lot and subscribe and yada yada yada, let's get to it. The first thing we see is the standoff between Otto Hightower and Daemon Targaryen on the bridge catwalk thing on Dragonstone. Dragonstone is the ancestral home of the Targaryens. It is relatively close to King's Landing, so it wouldn't take long to get there by dragon. At the end of the first episode, we saw Daemon and Missaria take off from King's Landing on the back of Caraxes, Daemon's dragon. My guess is this is from episode 2 of the show. Damon has come to Dragonstone to retrieve a dragon egg for Missaria, which we have seen in previous trailers. Remember, Damon is quite upset with Viserys after unnaming him heir, so part of this is he wants to annoy his brother a bit. We see that Cyrax comes to meet the two quarreling groups, which means Rhaenyra is on the back of the dragon. Damon likes his niece a lot, maybe a little too much. She is probably the one person Damon would listen to, he certainly is not going to listen to Otto. So maybe she can stop some bloodshed here. In the next shot, we see a person scaling a mountain crevice. I believe this is Damon on Dragonstone, he's sneaking in, trying to retrieve a dragon egg. In the background, we hear a voiceover from Rhaenyra saying, From my blood come the prince that was promised, and his will be the song of ice and fire. This is the prophecy for the prince that was promised. It is said quite a lot in the books and in the original show, I think it was maybe mentioned once. The Lord of Light followers often interchange this with the second coming of Azor Ahai, so it gets kind of jumbled. At the end of the last episode, it was revealed that Aegon the Conqueror conquered Westeros because he had a dream of a terrible winter that would end the world of men. He called this dream a song of ice and fire. Each Targaryen king has passed this info down to their heir, so that when the time comes, all of Westeros will have to stand against this evil. And if the world of men is to survive, a Targaryen must be sat on the Iron Throne to unite the people. Now she is reading it off something. Now from the previous trailer, we see Viserys hold the cat's paw dagger in a fire to get it red hot. Later in the trailer, we see Rhaenyra holding it over a fire as well. I think this prophecy is transcribed on the cat's paw dagger, but it only shows when it's red hot, which I think is pretty cool. It makes the dagger even more important, and for that to have killed the Night King makes it even cooler. Like, if you like the original show and read the books, that's a really cool nugget of info. Viserys goes on in the trailer to say, this info is larger than you. It's larger than the throne. He's really trying to drive home the fact that this is important information, do not forget it, don't forget to tell your heir, the world could be at stake. In the next shot, we see Viserys Targaryen and Alicent Hightower holding hands. In the first episode, we know Otto wants his daughter, Alicent, to, well, seduce the king. And, well, it seems to be working. In the next shot, we see a couple of carriages heading towards a castle. The castle is quite enormous, but it looks slightly destroyed as well. This is Harrenhal, which for those who know the history of Westeros, was melted by Aegon when King Hor refused to bend the knee. He would be roasted alive in the castle. The castle is still livable though, and is still quite the seat. This is the seat of House Strong. Lionel Strong is the head of the house, who we saw in the last episode. He is on the small council. He is the master of laws. We then see one of his sons, Lars Strong. He has another son as well, Harwin. So it seems Lionel may be going back to bring his sons with him to court. Harwin is considered to be the strongest man in the Seven Kingdoms. His brother Lars is very smart like his father Lionel, but has a club foot, which causes him to limp. In the next shot, we see Rhaenyra on a Targaryen boat. A dragon almost capsizes it by flying too close. I believe the dragon that did this was Caraxes, Daemon's dragon. The only reason I think this is because they are similar colors and have similar feet. Caraxes has more webbing around his feet than other dragons we have seen so far. So if this was Caraxes, this must mean Daemon was on him. Maybe he is sending a warning to stay away from Dragonstone. We see a shot of Rhaenyra and Laenor Valerion walking on the beaches of Dragonstone. 
Laenor is the son of Corlys and Rhaenys. We see a shot of a much older Viserys. You can see his beard is much grayer and his eyebrows are as well. I believe he is on Dragonstone in the shot. The doors remind me of it. To his right is Harold Westerling, a member of the Kingsguard. We hear a voiceover during this as well. I'm not sure who it is since the captions on YouTube just say speaker. They know what they're doing. One says how the king chose Rhaenyra. And the other one says the realm will not accept her. It does not surprise me that some may be plotting to get someone else on the throne. These people speaking could be members of the small council or they could be just other high lords. We get a shot of Alicent staring Rhaenyra down. I think Alicent may be a little jealous of Rhaenyra. She's going to be queen one day. Also, Alicent does not have the position like some others. Her father was the second son. Otto wouldn't be taking control of Old Town. The only way Alicent has to move up in the world is marrying up, which she is trying to do by seducing Viserys. In the next shot, we see a giant building. Now, I believe this is the Sept at the time in King's Landing. High Towers are very religious. The Faith's main headquarters is in Old Town, where the High Towers are from. So we may be getting a marriage ceremony between Viserys and Alicent. In the next shot, we are in the Godswood again, and Rhaenyra is meeting Alicent. Now, from the first episode, it was very bright and warm. But in this shot, it's much more gray. This could symbolize how their friendship is changing since, well, one is trying to bang the other's dad. In the next shot, we see Rhaenyra at Dragonstone. Daemon is at the end of the map table we saw in Game of Thrones. We see a couple members of the Kingsguard here as well. Now this is the older Rhaenyra. We hear that in the voiceover. Rhaenys Targaryen is standing off to the left as well. This is a war council. House of the Dragon is about the Dance of the Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War. So this is a prelude to it. We get a shot of the Stepstones. In the first episode, Corliss mentions how their leader, Kragus Dreyer, is nicknamed the Crab Feeder since he has inventive ways of killing his enemies. Well, we see a host of bodies tied to wooden stakes and a bunch of crabs. He nails them to the stakes and lets the crabs do the rest. In the next shot, we see an older Allison Hightower with Sir Kristen Cole. He's wearing Kingsguard armor. As I mentioned in my first explained video, there are only seven Kingsguard members at a time, so for Kristen to have gotten a spot means one has died during this time. In the next shot, we see Viserys leaving a carriage with a very pregnant Allison. So she was able to do what her father wanted her to do. I would say that this is attorney. That's why there's so many people around and tents are set up. You would think Viserys would have learned from the last tourney he held when his wife was pregnant, but apparently he's not as superstitious as me. We see a Lannister sigil on the bottom there and we see how strong greet Viserys and Alicent. We see Lionel in the middle, Lars on the left, and Harwin on the right. So perhaps the carriage we saw earlier in the trailer that was going to Harrenhal was theirs and a tourney is being held at the castle. I think I'm right about the tourney being held at Harrenhal, but I don't think that was their carriage. The king would have a much bigger party than that to protect them. In a voiceover, we hear Damon saying, Dreams didn't make us kings. Dragons did. This could be referencing Aegon's dream about the White Walkers, that Daemon doesn't care about the prophecy, he thinks it's a load of rubbish. In the next shot, we see the royal fleet head towards King's Landing. We see two dragons overhead. Now the royal fleet is mostly made up of Valyrian ships. Laenor and Lena, Corlys and Rhaenys' children, both are dragon riders. Lena rides Vagar, which is the biggest dragon we will see in the show, and Lenor rides Sea Smoke, one of the younger dragons we will see in the show. In this shot, we see Rhaenyra and Harold Westerling on a balcony and a table next to them. This is a tourney format where seven knights are the protectors for a highborn woman, and these knights are then challenged by other knights. If the challenger wins, they replace the knight as one of the protectors and can then be challenged in turn. I believe that's what we are seeing here. We also see Kristen Cole is part of this tourney as well. If you remember, Rhaenyra was quite taken with the handsome knight when she first met him in the first episode. In this shot, we see a Kingsguard member holding a crown. He is the same Kingsguard member we saw in Rhaenyra's War Council, so I am guessing he is crowning Rhaenyra Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. 
In the next shot, we see Viserys holding the cat's paw dagger to Damon's throat. And he says he is no conqueror. He is a plague. Now, Damon's hair is short in this. In a previous trailer, we saw Damon walk into the throne room with a crown with this same short hair. So Damon has claimed himself king of something, and his brother Viserys is not too happy about it. In the next shot, we see a wedding of Rhaenyra and Laenor Valerion. We see that she is looking straight at Kristen Cole while she is doing the dance. Now, it's hard to say if Kristen is looking back or not but I think Rhaenyra is trying to tell him something here. Remember, she has a bit of a thing for him. Not exactly the proper thing to do on your wedding night, though. We see some children here now. The two girls here belong to Lena Larion, and the two boys are Lenor and Rhaenyra's. So, yeah. We get a shot of Alicent and Viserys by a big bonfire. I thought this was a funeral pyre at first, but I can't think of who it would be for. If you know, leave it down in the comments below. In the next shot, we see Rhaenyra's face covered in blood and she is stabbing something. Now, to me, it looks like she is stabbing something with horns. So maybe this was a small dragon, maybe a ram, it's hard to say. This is at night and she looks to be next to a fire. In a previous trailer, we saw her here with Kristen Cole, so maybe this thing attacked Kristen and she's trying to fight him off. I don't know. If you have any ideas, please leave them in the comments below. In the next shot, we see two dragons over the sea. The one on the right, I believe, is Maelie's, which is written by Rhaenys Targaryen. It has different feet, so that is my reason why it's not Caraxes. And Maelie's is also known as the Red Queen. The one on the right, I'm going to have to go with Sea Smoke. It looks smaller than Maylie's, which would be correct. And Sea Smoke is a pale gray color. And Sea Smoke was written by Lenor, Rainey's son. In the next shot, we see the war for the Stepstones. So in episode one, Corliss mentions how if the Triarchy gets a hold of the Stepstones, the ports will start losing money. Well, we don't know that for certain if they did or not, but Corliss is taking action regardless. We see that Damon is there as well, helping the Valyrians fight the Triarchy. We see Sea Smoke take out some archers on a cliff, so Corliss's son is there as well. We also get a look at Kragus Dreher here. We can see he is disfigured and seems to wear a mask to cover it up. We then get our first look at Vagar. Vagar is the oldest and largest dragon we will see in the show. She was born in 52 BC, so 52 years before Aegon's conquest making her about 150, 160 years old. She is not as fast as some of the younger dragons, but is battle-tested and ferocious. So are you excited for the rest of Season 1 of House of the Dragon? Leave it down in the comments below, and if you want more House of the Dragon content, please subscribe and like the video. Check out the Twitter link in the description below, and as always, have an awesome day.